it's Sammy from Sammy Sweet Life and I just pulled my hair up like using the camera as a mirror so don't judge it was all wet and it just needed to go up I just wear my hair up like this all the time anyway but anyway today I have a story time for you guys this is just something that's been happening and on my mind and you'll see by the title down below we're talking bugs and creepy crawlies and this is something when we first found out we were moving to Texas I was like oh my gosh they have scorpions there and I was kind of freaking out about it and we have thus far until living in this house only seen one scorpion and it was dead and so we haven't had experience with this until now we are a little bit further out from the city so we lived in South Austin when we first moved to Austin really close to downtown just like right outside of downtown and then we lived out in the country once when we bought the other house and then the last house we rented was still really inside the city pretty close to the city and now we're out a little bit further again so we're out more in the country not even as much in the country as we were one house ago or two houses ago but now we're having all the bugs and creepy crawly situations so we are on a green space our house backs to an open space it's not houses um, butted up against each other like our previous experience out further out so that plays into it also we're still in a brand new construction zone the houses around us are still being built so that adds to the critters and things that we're going to see and this neighborhood and lots of neighborhoods in not immediately downtown um, a lot of neighbors around Austin, they build in these green spaces, which is just open spaces where houses won't be built. There's a lot of walking trails and hiking trails and things within these communities. And so we're in that kind of situation where there is just wildlife. Like there are deer that roam around our community. Like we will see them when we're taking a walk. There's deer that will cross in front of us. And so we're just kind of surrounded by wildlife, but I did not expect the creatures and critters. <laughs> One of our neighbors has caught possums and raccoons they've just been kind of digging under their patio and so they've been catching things they were being disruptive and so we're just around a lot of nature and so we have scorpions and we found one scorpion i told this in a different story time where i was just kind of catching you guys up to what things were going on i was feeding stella in the middle of telling the story but i'm going to tell you all the scorpion stories because now i have many um in the title i say four scorpions in seven months. It's actually five scorpions in seven months. Just one of them was outside. It wasn't actually in the house. So I do have five scorpion stories for you guys. And I'll start with number one, where I was home by myself. Well, home with Stella. Johnny and Libby had just started taking a walk. So I was home alone with Stella and it was in the evening, not dark or anything, but this was more back in the summertime. Earlier in the day, I had pulled something out of the dryer and a pair of Johnny's pants fell on the floor and I was holding Stella and I don't like to bend over all the time holding Stella. So I just left the shorts on the ground. And then a couple of hours later, we were home alone in the situation with the scorpion and I was pulling something else out of the dryer. It was the same load. It was kind of a rough day. I hadn't had a chance to fold the clothes or anything. So again, I'm holding Stella. She's being whiny. It's right before bedtime for her. It's getting kind of later in the day. I'm still light outside, but getting kind of dusky. And so I go back to the dryer and get out her pajamas. I was just going to use the pajamas that I already had like not ready to go. I didn't want to pull some from her closet. So I was like, I'll just get them out of the dryer since I need to fold these anyway. And so as I get them out of the dryer, I do finally bend over, pull up the shorts and throw them in the dryer. And as I'm pulling them up and as I see myself tossing them inside the dryer, the scorpion recoils and it's sitting there and it's like a foot from my foot at the most. From my foot, it's not barefoot, I'm wearing socks, but still like a scorpion could probably sting through a sock. Um, so it's like right there, it did recoil itself, it didn't try to run. And I'm thinking, holy S, it's just me and Stella. I can't like call for Johnny because he's gone. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I'm just there with the scorpion, with the baby in my arms, who's like whining and starting to almost melt down because it's right before bed for her. I'm getting her, literally trying to get her ready for bed. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. If I run, if I like try to go get my phone and call him, the scorpion could run and then I'll have to burn everything down. Not really, but like that's the thoughts going through my head. Like we can never sleep in this house again if there's a scorpion on the loose. And so I did the only thing I could do. There was a mop that I could reach because we have our cleaning supplies in that closet or in that laundry room. And so I grabbed the mop and it's one of those flat like Bona mops. And I slam it down on the scorpion, kill it the first shot. I have like adrenaline pumping. I am like 
really like anxious and starting to breathe heavily and like freaking out because it's right there and I don't like creepy crawly things to begin with but I had to handle it myself and so I'm like I only had one shot at this I did slam it down I did kill it and its little body twitched and it was like the grossest thing and like even talking about it now I have kind of goosebumps about it it was so gross but I did end up killing the scorpion and then making sure it was dead I put like a container over it in case it came back to life even though I thought it wouldn't come back to life um, I did take a picture of it but uh, I put a container over it just in case it came back to life and then I just closed the laundry room door and had Johnny look at it and clean it up and I did text message the people around us we have a little text chain and I was like okay what kind of scorpion is this should I be worried that it has friends and also, when I had thrown the shorts in the dryer, I was like, oh my gosh, what if there are more? So I slammed the dryer shut and I didn't touch the dryer clothes because I'm thinking, you know, if there are multiple scorpions, now they're in the dryer in those clothes. And so Johnny ended up going through those clothes and making sure there were no more scorpions. I think they're more solitary, so you will just see a one-off scorpion here and there, but it freaked me out and it was hard for me to like go in the laundry room the next few days and like looking making sure there's no scorpions anywhere and some of the things they tell you to do if you're in a scorpion prone area I've looked more of this up is don't walk in the dark barefoot anywhere like outside or inside because they can just be there um, they'll be crawling on the ground in the dark and you won't see it and you'll step on it and get stung always turning lights on before i step into a dark room so that i don't step on a scorpion or something and it's just kind of freaky so that was our first experience with a scorpion it was me flying solo seeing the scorpion and then scorpion number two i was getting packages from our doorstep this was the night before stella's birthday and the neighborhood picked up a present and gotten a balloon for her and so she was dropping it off in the evening and so I had seen we had gotten like a Target package or an Amazon package. I order most things now because I just don't go out. I hardly ever go shopping or grocery shopping or anything. It's like everything gets delivered but I had a little package sitting there and so as I am getting the balloon and bag from her and she's saying goodbye, I grabbed the little package, set it right inside the door. I'm like I'm not going to open it and deal with it tonight. I'll just leave it there because it was getting kind of late and then later um, so the entryway is right, right out this room. And so later I needed something in the office and I go and flip on the light and then there's a scorpion crawling up the wall, like that wall right there. There's a scorpion crawling up the wall and it's like almost to the light level, but over further. Thankfully this time Johnny was home to deal with it. So he ended up killing this one and it was a small one. The first one was honking big and I did show it in that other video. I'll try to insert that clip of the scorpion and I had a quarter and then next to it was this big honking scorpion. It was a fully grown one and it's in our laundry room. If you've seen our house tour, um, I don't know if it came in through the garage or it came in through a vent, but those are the two ways that it could have gotten into the laundry room. But either way, it's kind of a distance. It's not like it's right next to um, the front door as this instance was um, the second time around with the scorpion crawling up the wall in here. So that was actually right next to the front door and it probably came in on the package. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I just brought the scorpion inside and then it was like crawling around and it didn't just actually come inside. So that part was a little scary and it was smaller. It was just a little tiny scorpion, but it also let me realize how teeny tiny they could be when I've been looking for like bigger scorpions, you know? Now I know they're super teeny tiny and I almost didn't even see it. It was almost translucent on the wall. So that one really, really scared the crap out of me. And again, I turn on lights as soon as I'm in the room, but now they climb walls and so, I'm freaking out that they could be climbing up the walls and I could touch them on the light switch or something. So I'm just having scorpion anxiety. <laughs> That's a thing. It shouldn't be a diagnosis. <laughs> I'm having scorpion anxiety about these scorpions at night. The third instance also involves a package. So um, I was going to go pick up the packages. When I see the delivery, um, I'll get like a notification from Target or from Amazon. Those are like the main two. Um, I'll get a delivery notification and sometimes I'll just go grab it immediately. But a lot of times I am in the middle of something. I have Stella and I have to drag Stella with me. A lot of times Olivia wants to come with me too. So it's just just easier for me to grab them later. And so now I've been more proactive about just hauling everybody to the front door to pick up my package and come back inside. But in this instance, I had left a package or two outside on the patio. And once I tucked Stella in, it was getting dark. I went out to check for the packages 
and flipped on the light and there's a little scorpion and he's ready. He's like just right outside on the patio. This was outside and he's just like got his little stinger up and he's ready to pounce because the light had just turned on. So he was like getting in fighting position and I'm like, okay, I'll go get my packages later. And I shut the door and I got my packages the next day. <laughs> so I wasn't gonna go out there messing with scorpions. So that one, we just let him go on his merry way and he looked he looked different. He was a darker color. So I know there's multiple species of scorpion. So he was not the translucent one. He was much darker. So there we go. There's scorpion story number three. I just left him be outside. This story time for scorpion number four is probably the most heebie-jeebie one for me. Although all of them have been kind of heebie-jeebie, but this one, it was the weekend. On the weekends, I just kind of wake up whenever the kids need me, basically. So um, if I hear Stella waking up, I'll wake up with her. Sometimes we wake up really early and everyone else is still sleeping. And sometimes Livy's the first one up and she will come out of her room, grab a cereal bar or some cereal and then start working on art quietly. And I'll hear her the second she gets up. Like, I hear her bounding down the stairs and I'll hear her playing art. So as long as she's okay, I can just kind of lay there for a few minutes, even though I can hear her and I'm really awake. But this morning I heard her and then like, I don't know, five to 10 minutes later, I mosey out and she goes, mom, something bad happened. And I was like, what? She goes, I need to tell you this bad thing. She said, there's a tarantula in my toilet. And I'm like, what? I'm like barely awake at this point. You know, I just kind of woken up enough to go out and say hi and give her hugs and stuff. And I was like, okay, I'm fully awake now. Let's go kill a tarantula in your toilet. So we hike upstairs and we have like a, a shoe or something. And I open the toilet and it's a scorpion inside the toilet like there's the water level of the toilet and the scorpions right above that so freaked me the crap out and i said okay olivia just go wake up daddy and tell him there's a scorpion in the toilet so he can come kill it because it was like it was moving and i didn't know what to do i panicked at the moment and i was like at this point i'm like johnny can kill the scorpion too because i'm like i don't know what to do it's inside the toilet and um he comes up after a minute he's like still like half asleep coming upstairs and like i said on the second story all the way upstairs inside my kid's toilet and he's like oh yeah they can go through the sewage pipes i'm like why did why did this have to happen i would have really loved to never know this <laughs> like i now when i lift up the toilet seat i make sure there are no scorpions in it so he ended up killing this one with the toilet wand like poking it and it ended up getting flushed down the toilet and it was really really gross and now I check all the time with the toilets every time I go to the bathroom and he informs me scorpions are not the only things that can go through sewage pipes so we could also have snakes going through the sewage pipes and there are a lot of snakes in Texas and especially our area we've seen a few snakes and um, even a coral snake has been right on our street near one of the houses being built so we definitely have snakes we watch for rattlesnakes and we've been teaching Olivia to not go in like tall grasses and stuff. Somebody in the neighborhood had a snake come through their shower drain. So it's a small snake. It had to be small to fit through the little grate thing on the shower, but it happens. And now the scorpion and the snake can both come through the pipes. And now I'm freaking out about this because it's just something that happens that I never thought about until there was a scorpion in my toilet. And I was like, man, when she told me it was a tarantula, and then I find out it's a scorpion. I was like, I don't know which one's worse. They both sound terrible. They both sound scary as crap. And I just am glad that it was like a medium sized one and not a humongous one. And I'm glad she saw it. And it was just there and not like outside of the toilet at that point and got her. And so I was like, Olivia, you can go and do your own thing. She loves being independent and getting her cereal bar and playing by herself and like being the only one awake. So I try to give her a few minutes and it gives me a few minutes to just lay there and relax because she doesn't need something immediately. She's getting to that age where she can do more stuff independently. And I enjoy that time and she does too. But I told her this, I was like, if you see a scorpion in the house, you immediately wake up mom and dad, like immediately, you don't wait. She should have just run into the room and be like, scorpion, come on mom, and wake me up like that. Um, but that one was pretty freaky. And then the last scorpion story, I'm glad this was scorpion story number five because it was my least freaky <laughs> scorpion story. And now I feel like, okay, scorpions, I can deal with scorpions, especially when they're already dead, which this one was thankfully. So 
I was going to cook baked CD and I was going to use my big giant Pyrex dish, which I keep under inside one of my cabinets. And so I go and I pull the two things that are on top of it. Your car's driving around, it's carpool time, so people are coming and going, picking up kids and stuff. But I have the muffin tin stored on top of this Pyrex glass dish and I need the glass dish. So I pick up the metal uh, muffin tins pick them up, slide out the Pyrex dish, and as I'm sliding it out, the scorpion moves, and I do kind of like jump, um, but it was dead. It just moved from the movement of the glass dish. So I learned in this instance, I don't think scorpions can climb glass. So I was telling Johnny, like, we need to coat the walls with glass, coat everything with glass, so the scorpions can't climb everything. So this one was already dead. He was just stuck in my Pyrex dish. I washed it really, really well before I cooked with it. That one wasn't quite as freaky, but it's kind of unnerving thinking they're inside my cabinet. That's the only way it could have gotten in there is it climbed into the cabinet and there's no like spaces that it could have fallen in or like, I don't know, been there originally because it was an empty cabinet when we first got it. There's no holes and things. So it must have come in the door somewhere and climbed into the cabinet. And so that's just kind of unfortunate that Yet again, we're finding another place that the scorpions can be. Um, I've also heard a lot of things about make sure you shake out your shoes. We've been doing that pretty religiously for a long time, since the first scorpion really, even before then some, but now I shake them out every single time. And also like towels and stuff that are folded um, in linen closets is another place they could be. So I definitely take my towel out and shake it and make sure there's not a scorpion falling out from it. So it's just one of those things that we're dealing with. So we've had four scorpions so far in the house, five scorpion encounters overall. I'm trying to read more about it. We do have a pest company who comes and this last time I was like, dude, we've had scorpions in the house. They did end up spraying a little bit in the house because we're trying to make sure they're not getting in. They also do a barrier all the way around the house and they also mess with our weep holes, which are gaps inside the bricks it like allows your house to breathe a little bit when the weather fluctuates your house can expand and contract and so these weep holes help with that so things don't crumble and crack unnecessarily so they made sure to put stuff in our weep holes so that scorpions can't climb through the walls with those holes so we also need to make sure our weather stripping around our doors is completely 100 percent sealed which i know it's not in all the places so we have to check for that one of our friends we've been spending time with we've kind of like potted ourselves together we don't do much but we see each other and um, that's kind of our like quarantine bubble but they put out little sticky strips at their main doors because the scorpions will come in the door and like walk the perimeters so they put them in the corners near the doors and they've caught quite a few that way so i think we might put those at the front door and the garage door nowhere that stella can reach them because she's just gonna mess with them and get stuck to them and stuff but i definitely think we need them at the front door since we've had two of the encounters have been at the front door so we definitely need to do something about that make sure there's no gaps because they can get in like the teeniest tiniest little gap and so I'm a little bit freaked out that they can come through the toilet, they can go through the tiniest gaps, they can be anywhere. And so I'm getting, like I said, scorpion anxiety, scorpion paranoia, and I just wanted to share the story with you guys about our scorpion adventures because this is the kind of thing I expected when we moved to Texas and I didn't get it and I was really getting like really complacent about it like oh yeah there's snakes and stuff but we don't really see the snakes we kind of know what to look out for for the snakes they're not inside the house where this one is like they're invading my house <laughs> so that part's not pleasant but I just wanted to tell you guys these stories because it's been happening we've been here seven months now like right at seven months and we got five scorpion encounters so that's almost a scorpion per month and it's been a lot. So um, like I said, there's construction, but I forgot to mention somebody near us is building a pool as well. One of our neighbors close by. So that also brings the critters up. So they're digging in the dirt and displacing some critters. So hopefully once their pool is completely done, we won't have quite as many scorpions. But since we live like right back to forest area, I feel like we're still going to get some. So we just need to learn all the ways to protect ourselves. If you happen to be in a scorpion prone area, let me know what you guys do. I'm really open to suggestions. I would like to have a lot less scorpion encounters in the future, but it's just probably gonna be something that we deal with. And I'm just dreading the day that one of us gets stung. Cause I don't know what that's like. Some scorpions can sting really bad and send people to hospitals. And most of them are just like, just really bad stings. So I'm just hoping that 
that day never comes, but I just feel like it will come eventually. And some of the kids, some of the neighbor kids run around barefoot and I'm like, Libby, you will never run around barefoot. There's scorpions everywhere. <laughs> My kid's gonna be scared of scorpions too. It's just too much. <laughs> it's just way too much. So I hope you guys liked the story time. I've got a couple other stories I wanna share with you guys soon. I ended up finally ordering my game capture um, device so that I can stream the Switch stuff. I'll be making some tutorials and decorate with me, some videos about how I play habits and stuff. So I plan on doing that coming up soon. I'm feeling more myself, like I talked about in her 12 month update. Today, actually, she did not nurse at all. And so I think we're done. I think I'll have a video coming up on our nursing journey, breastfeeding journey. And also I have one other, one other thing on my mind. Oh, and I have a new iPhone coming. So I'll have an unboxing video and talk all about that, which version I chose and why. And it's probably not what you expected. So stay tuned for that. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, give me your scorpion stories or your scorpion advice down below because I really need some advice for how to conquer these guys. They are freaking me out. Um, and I think that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different. Now I feel like you guys can all freak out with me. So it just makes me feel less freaked out a little bit. So I hope you guys liked it. Have a great day and I'll catch you next time. Bye.